get ready to go. We're glad that you're all here, so now it's time to start the show. We're not in school, but we can still pretend by making music until this ends. We're making music with our Falcon friends. Hey there, Falcons. Guys, we got something brand new to learn about today. A brand new thing in music that you've never heard of before. Something brand new, it's gonna give us some new things to do, some new notes to learn, some new music to make. So, get ready to have some fun, and get ready to make some music. We're making music with our Falcon friends. All right, first grade, we got a brand new song for you today, and it might make your bellies growl a little bit. It's gonna make me hungry because, oh man, I've been thinking about eating one of these all day. Let me describe it to you, tell me if you can tell me what food I am talking about. It grows on a tree. Oh, oftentimes it's this color right here, red. Has a stem. Sometimes a worm will pop out of it. You know what fruit, what food I am talking about? An apple. Exactly right. I have a song about an apple. In fact, not just an apple, but about the whole apple tree. Let me sing it for you. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. Ow. You ever walk near an apple tree before? Ever look up and see those apples? Ooh, if one fell off and hit you in the head, that might hurt a little bit. Question, how many times do I take a breath in this song? Listen. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. How many times do I take a breath, do you know? Four, nice job, four breaths. I'll sing this time, you echo back. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. Good, try a little bit longer this time. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. Let's try the whole song. Sing it with me this time. Here we go. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. Good. So our song, Apple Tree, has a couple of things, fun things we can do with it. First thing, there's a game you can play. Now, if you have a big group of people, this works really, really well. It might be hard to get a big group of people, but if you do, you can make two people the apple tree. One person stands here, one person stands here, and they hold hands like this and make a tunnel. Everyone else goes around. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. You ever hear London Bridge? Well, it's kind of like that. We capture someone and they are by, they're out, okay? Another way you can play that, if you don't have a big group of people, is with a bunch of stuffed animals or toys. You guys have stuffed animals and toys in your house. Set them up in a circle. You stand right in the middle. You're the tree and they are the apples that have fallen, fallen around the tree. Sing the song in point. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. Whichever toy you're pointing out is out. Bye-bye, and they're gone. Until you are left with only one toy at the end. And that's the winning toy. It must be your favorite toy. Something else you can do is use your castanets to make music with this song. Watch. Apple tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. You can actually do the entire song just as if you think it in your head. See if you can think it and play along on your cast nets. Listen. Did you hear those words? See if you can do that with your cast nets. It's a lot of fun. Have fun making our music and have fun eating an apple. We're making music with our Falcon friends. All right, first grade. Starting to get cold outside. Let's head back outside one more time to the playground. Grab those handlebars. Here we go. Seesaw up and down in the air and on the ground. Good. Try with your arms like this. Arms up, arms down. Follow me. Follow me. 
Let's try it. Here we go. Seesaw up and down in the air and on the ground. Good. Now, we've answered a couple questions about this song. Over the past couple weeks, let's see who's got the best memory out there. First question in this song, how many beats do we keep in the first phrase? Lou, 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 Lou. How many beats? Four. Exactly right. We have four beats. Over the first two beats, listen very carefully. Lou, Lou. How many different pitches did I sing? Two. Good job. What's different about them? What makes them different? Hmm, hmm. Remember the words? Yes, one is high and one is low. Nice job. We have a high pitch and we have a low pitch. And if we listen to the rest of the phrase, we've got more. High, low, high, high, low. Good. In this song, in these sounds, high and low, are they a step apart like this? High, low, high, high, low. Does that sound right? Oh, it doesn't sound right, does it? No. Are they a skip apart? High, low, high, high, low. They are a skip apart. Nice job. We have two different pitches, a high pitch and a low pitch that are a skip apart. Nice job. Now, last week I asked you to make a picture, and the picture I made was this. Hopefully you made that picture. If you have that picture that you made last week, get that picture out. If you don't have it, you can make another one quick. You can draw some seesaws, draw whatever you want. But what you do is make that picture and then point to it while we sing on our sounds. High, low, high, high, low. So make sure you have that picture. Make sure you're pointing to it. If you have to make a new one, that's okay. But make sure you do it because coming up next, we have got something brand new to learn about. Something you've probably never seen before in music. Something that is going to change the way that we look at music. So change that we hear the way we hear music. Change the way that we have fun making music with our Falcon friends. So we'll be right back with some brand new information. We're making music with our Falcon friends. All right, first grade. Now we have some brand new information for you. That's really going to open your eyes to a whole new thing about music. In music, we have different pitches. And in music, when we're talking about pitches, we're actually talking about things called solfege sounds. Can you see the word solfege? Solfege are the different pitches that we have, and each of our different pitches has a name. Right now, we've heard two different pitches, a high pitch and a low pitch, and each of those pitches has a name. In music, we're going to call a high pitch so, and we're going to call a low pitch me. So it'll sound like this if we sing it. So, me, so, so, me. So is our high pitch and me is our low pitch. See if you can sing along with me this time. Here we go. So, me, so, so, me. Great. There's also a hand sign to go along with these. So we can show our hand like that. It's a good way to remember what we're singing. So here's so. Me is lower. So we're going to lower our hand and make it flat. And that's going to be me. So watch. Sing and show me your hand sign. So, me, so, so, me. Can you try with the other hand? Here we go. So, me, so, so, me. Try with both hands. Here we go. So, me, so, so, me. Great. Okay. This time, I'm going to sing it. I want you to echo me back. Don't sing with me. I'm going to sing first and you're going to echo back. Listen. So, me, so, so, me. Good. This time, I'm not going to sing on solfege names. I'm going to sing on Lou. I want you to figure it out in your head and sing it back to me on the solfege. So I'll sing on Lou. You sing on solfege, okay? Here I go. Lou, 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 solfege. Great. So and me are our solfege names. And now, this is where things get very interesting. So we can hear these, obviously, but what does this look like? Well, you're going to need a piece of paper, and you're going to need something to write with, okay? I'm going to use a dry erase board, so I'm not wasting a lot of paper. But if you just have a piece of paper, that's all you need to start today, okay? On your piece of paper, I would like you to draw some steps. My marker died. Oh, always check your marker before you start filming. Give me one second. I'll be right back. I'm back. Okay. I'm going to draw some steps. Because our steps, you might have steps at your house, they get you from one level to the next. They go higher and higher, or they go lower and lower. So I'm going to put up some steps here. Three steps, in fact. We've got two solfege sounds here. We have a high sound and a low sound. And don't forget, our sounds are not a step apart. They're actually a skip apart. Now, so is our high sound. I'm going to put so on our top step. Now, so is spelled a little interestingly in music. That's how you spell so in music. They all have kind of interesting spellings. 
Me is lower, but it's not a step lower. It's actually a skip lower. So I'm going to put me on our first step. Now we've got our solfege sounds right here. So, me, so, so, me. Can we sing and actually point to that if you made one of these or even point to mine? Sing and point that. Here we go. So, me, so, so, me. Great. Now, you're going to need another piece of paper. You're also going to need a ruler because we're going to be making something which is where our notes are going to live. Our solfege names live in our steps, but our notes don't live in our steps. Our notes live somewhere else. Our notes live on something called a staff. This is what a staff looks like. Now, to make your own staff, here's what you're going to need. On your piece of paper, take your ruler and make some marks. You want to hold it the long way, not the tall way. Hold your paper the long way, horizontally. And on your paper, you're going to make a mark. You're going to make a mark at two, three, whoops, four, five, and six. Do the same thing on the bottom. Two, three, four, five, and six. Two, three, four, five, six. And then all you have to do is connect them with a line. Like that. And do that all the way across. So you end up with a staff, just like that, five lines. Okay. So go ahead and draw one of those on your piece of paper. You're going to need those five lines. Five lines, very, very important to have those five lines. Now I'm just going to use this staff because it's already made for me. You want to print one of these out too, you can probably find one online. But if you want to make your own too, that's how you can make it with a ruler. Two, three, four, five, six. Two, three, four, five, six. Connect them and there you go. Okay. These lines on our staff, this is called a staff, I'll write that up here, are numbered from the bottom to the top. The bottom line is called the first line. The next line is called the second line. Next line is called the third line. Next line is called the fourth line. And the next line is called the fifth line. Okay, I'm gonna write a note. Can you figure out what line it's on? What line is that on, do you know? The third line, very good, okay. Erase that one. Put another one. What line is that on? Second line. Very good. Okay. What line is that? Fourth line. Very good. You're getting pretty good at this. Okay. Let's do another one. What line is fifth line? Very good. Okay. Let's do one more. And what line? First line. Okay, good. Now. Okay, I've had a little hint there. Let's see if you can figure it out. If I get rid of the numbers, okay. Let's see if you can figure this out. Um, what line is that on? Can you count? Third line. Very good. I'll do another one. Uh, let's put one. What line is that on? Second line, very good. Make sure the line's going right through the middle of that note. Good. Oh, let's do another one, okay. What line is that on? Count, one, two, three. Fourth line, very good, okay. Oh, what line is this on? Can you figure it out? Count, one, two, three, four. Fifth line, very good. And finally, what line is that first line? Okay, great. Now. We know the lines, we know how they work. Where do our notes go? Where do our solfege names go? So, me, so, so, me. Well, here's what we're gonna do. Below your staff that you've made, I'd like you to make a little reminder. It's gonna make little reminders to help keep our brains organized. So I'm gonna make a little reminder down here. I'm gonna use the letter S or the letter M. S for so, M for me. Watch. So, me, so, so, me. We have to figure out where these go. I'm going to tell you where they go. So lives on the second line. So we're going to count one, two. And right above that S, we're going to put a note on the second line. Now, we did that one, so we can cross that S out. We're done with that one. The next one's me. Me is lower than so. 
So, can you figure out what line mi is going to go on if it's lower than so? First line, exactly. So the first line is where I'm going to put mi, just like that. The next two are both so. We know where so goes. What line does so go on? It goes on the second line. But this time, I'm not just going to put one. I actually have to put two back to back, like that. And finally, we've got one more me at the end. And me, we said, goes on the first line. Exactly right. There's one more thing we have to do to finish our music. Take a look. We've got our ta's and toddies, our quarter notes and eighth notes, and now they are not living on the beat lines. They are living on the staff because we could sing this now on our solfege names. So me, so so me. Can we sing that together? So me, so so me. Sing it and show your hands. Here you go. So me, so so me. This time, don't sing it. Just think it, but show the hands. Here we go. Guys, take some time, practice making a staff, and practice writing these notes out. It's a lot of fun when you can write the notes on the different lines like that. So, we've got some brand new stuff here in music, and hopefully you enjoy it. We're making music with our Falcon friends. All right, first grade, now listen, we have been working really, really hard with our new rhythms, Ta and Toddy, for the past couple weeks. This week we learned something new, but I want to make sure that we really understand these rhythms. So what I want you to do today is this. I'd like you to make a very simple pattern. You can do four beats, at least four beats. You can do more if you want, but make a four beat pattern at least. You want to make more? Go for it. I don't care at all. You can make it as long as you want but make at least a four beat pattern. What I want you to do is use ta and toddy and write out a pattern. I don't care what, I'm not gonna show you an example because I think you can do it. And what I want you to do is write out that pattern and once you have it written out, I would like you to perform that pattern on your castanets. I like to see you perform some music that you wrote. So below here in the description, there is a Flipgrid link. And what I want you to do is post yourself playing the music that you wrote. You can hold up the music so we can see it. You can play the rhythms and you can speak it too. Toddy, 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 whatever you want to play. You get to be creative here and make it up. I just want to see how well you understand our new rhythms, ta and toddy. So make those flip grip videos and have some fun. Thank you.